Hi, everyone. Welcome to English Coach 3 Cheese. I'm Tanya. And today I wanted to join you live to answer any questions you might have in English and in learning English or questions you might have about English Coach 3 Cheese. So I'm going to turn this off here, make it a little easier to hear. I see that we have some people joining us live. So if you are here live, let me know where you're listening from in the comments and start thinking about a question you have about learning English, whether you're here live or listening to the live, write your question in the comments. And while you're thinking of your question, I'm going to start with a question that a follower asked me about learning English. And this is a specific question. I think I was just talking, not I think, I was just talking on Instagram about how when you ask a specific question, it makes it easier to get an answer that is helpful. It will help you in your English learning when you can ask questions that are more specific. So this question was, um, should how many English accents should I listen to when I'm learning English? Whoops, when I'm, I hit return, when I'm learning English. Okay, this is a great question. Um, and the answer, the short answer is it depends, of course, it depends on what your goal is. But generally speaking, it's um, good when you first start, if you're a beginner, it's a good idea to stick with or stay with one accent so that you can build some vocabulary and some understanding of how to speak and how the language works without getting too confused from different accents. Because of course, different accents come from different countries and they may have or probably have a slightly different vocabulary, slightly different grammar, and it can make it a little confusing. But once you become an intermediate learner, it's a good idea to listen to more than one accent. Of course, you don't want to confuse yourself too much. So if you're listening to a lot of accents and you're feeling frustrated or overwhelmed, then it's probably a good idea to do fewer or to listen to fewer accents. So you might start with two or three and then add more as you feel more comfortable. Even as a native speaker, some accents are very difficult for me to listen to. And I use the subtitles if I have subtitles to listen to to help me. Um, but the key here is to stay in a zone where you're, what I was saying, you want to understand 90% or more of what the person is saying. So uh, this is the basic answer to that question. We could uh, use a little more. Oh, can you hear me? It says that it's reconnecting. Hey, T, if you're using the Wi-Fi, can you please stop? Okay, we're our Wi-Fi. We're having a little bit of Wi-Fi challenge here. So hopefully you can still hear me. Ah, okay. Thank you for letting me know that you can hear me in the comments. So I'm going to look um, at the comments and see if, see if there are any questions here about learning English or if English Coach 3 T's. I'd love for you to share your questions. Ah, one person asks, um, how are you today? I I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. It's Saturday here as I'm recording this live. And, and um, Saturdays are a day when I have fewer students, so it's not quite as busy for me on Saturday. How are you all doing? Let me know in the comments. And if you have questions, uh, put them in the comments, whether you're listening live or if you're listening to the recording. If you're here live, I'll do what I can to answer. Um, even if I can't give you the whole answer, I'll do what I can to answer your question. And if you're listening to the recording, um, I will gather those questions for another live 
or possibly a whole video, depending on what your question is. Uh, Nordine, welcome. You're saying it's your first time in the live? Welcome. It's so great to see you here. Oh, and in Azerbaijan, it's Sunday. Yes, I'm dog tired. This is a great um, idiom. I'm dog tired. You can see that in the comments there. It means I'm really, really tired. Um, and if you've just joined us, I answered our first question. Um, so you might want to listen to the recording or go back and listen again uh, to see if you understood it all. I was saying you want to try to listen to things where you understand like 90%. So we're stay in the range of 80 to 90%. This is your highest learning range. Did I put that in the comments? I don't see it. I meant to type it, so I'm gonna, okay, here we go. This is your highest learning range, 80 to 90%. And if, if you're listening to or reading something where you understand less than 80 or 90%, it's a different type of learning. It doesn't mean you aren't learning. It's a different type of learning. So you wanna keep most of your learning in that 80 or 90%, up to 90% is great. And if it's less, like 60 to 70%, it needs to be something you're very interested in, first of all, um, and perhaps something where you can ask questions, for instance, with a teacher or a conversation exchange, or maybe if you're reading, you can use your cell phone to look up words, which brings me to our second question. But first, let me check here. Maryam says, I can't create sentences, I'm afraid to make mistakes. So Maryam, if we were all in the same room, I would ask everyone here, who's afraid to make mistakes? And I can tell you that everyone would raise their hands unless they've been practicing making mistakes and learning that it's okay. So it's so important to know that it is okay to make mistakes. And in fact, it is not just okay, it's a part of the process. You will make mistakes, you actually have to make mistakes to learn a language. Um, and if you disagree, I'm happy to talk about that with you, but there isn't such a thing as a person who didn't make mistakes. In fact, the only difference between me and you is that I have made more mistakes. And if you think about that, um, people will say, no, actually, when you're learning your first language, you make mistakes all the time as a young child. And it's not a big deal. You just do it and do it and do it until you understand uh, more how it's supposed to be. But the goal here is to be understood. Um, I know a lot of native English speakers who still make mistakes and they don't think anything of it. And you probably know a lot of people in your native languages as, as well. Uh, Sirac I'm not sure I'm saying your name right, so I'm sorry, but it looks like Siraco Gutierrez says, I make a lot of mistakes, however, I learn from them. Yes, and I will tell you this, it's almost impossible to not learn from your mistakes. So you can learn from them consciously, like thinking about it, think about the mistake, correct the mistake. You could even think about why, although that's not always necessary or not necessary very often actually, but you can practice doing it correctly and learn from it. Also though, when you're speaking and you're making the same mistake, you are learning so many other things from speaking and practicing that that mistake, that one mistake or those 20 mistakes are really no big deal compared to the huge amount of things you're learning by practicing. So I always say to my students, go out there and make as many mistakes as you can. Obviously, I don't mean try to make mistakes, but go out there and practice and make mistakes because that's a part of the practice. I think I missed one question, so I'm gonna go back up. What is the short way to learn English? I don't have an answer to this, but um, my answer would be, the more you practice, the faster you learn. So there isn't really a shortcut. There's not really a short way. 
but you can uh, get to a point where you can be understood pretty quickly. You'll probably still be making a lot of mistakes, but you can um, interact and speak with a lot of people. Um, I can't tell when my computer says this. It says your connection is unstable. Please wait while we try recon reconnecting. Hopefully you can still hear me. If you can still hear me, give me a thumbs up. Ah, there, it went away. Can you still hear me? I'm really sorry for the uh, technical issues we're having today. I don't usually have trouble with my internet, but um, hopefully you can still hear me. What I was saying is, I don't hear. One person says, I don't hear. Can you hear me? Ah, Josie Nalo, hi, welcome. So at least a couple people here can hear, so it's not just me. Um, but we were talking about the short way. There's not really a short way, but the fa the more you practice, the faster you will learn, of course. Um, and there is a limit to that. You can practice all day, every day. And if you exhaust yourself, it's not really helpful. You kind of have to find a balance. Um, but the, the main thing is to, uh, is to practice. I see one person saying, speak with yourself. Yes, this is a key to fluency. You can um, find a list of questions and hopefully in different topics, go and research it online and then take one question a day and speak for three minutes on this question. Um, if you're already doing it, then you're already speaking and practicing every day. But if you start doing this, it will get you to fluency faster. Um, I'm going to take my sweater off because it suddenly became very hot in here. Um, all right, let's see if I missed any questions here. I hope that was helpful. Miriam asks, what books are suitable for beginners to read? So that's a great question, Miriam. The, the book that I have a few books that I recommend, but the books I would recommend to start with are by Ollie Richards, I believe his, his last name. Ollie Richards, I'll put it here. Maybe it's Rogers. I think it's Richards, could be Rogers. I'll put that with a question mark. You can find him on Amazon and he does English books in levels with vocabulary words. Ah, I actually have one here. It's Ollie Richards. This is his level one, I believe. Yes, for beginners. And it has short stories. And then you can see that the words that are in bold, he gives definitions for those. These are books I like to start with. Children's books, if you're even before this level, very easy children's books are a really great way to learn. And if you have children, reading to your children is a great way for both of you to learn. Pardon me a second. And then... This series, which is in Spanish here, but it's originally in English. It's in English, it's who was Pablo Picasso, but they have lots of different people in, in um, English. Who was George Washington? Who was Malala? So they're people from all over the world. And the books are for uh, beginner to intermediate, but you can see there's lots of pictures. They are not written for English learners. They're written for English, pardon me, English speakers at about a fourth or fifth grade level, maybe maybe third grade. Um, I use these books, as you can see, in Spanish. I'm actually past this level now in Spanish, but I read a lot of these in Spanish and you can find them in English even easier than in Spanish. So great question on that. Um, keep reading, read, 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 read. read will reading will help you. For the person who asked about the short way, make sure that you're reading every day too. Okay. Thank you everyone who's joining. Ah, Rami asks a great question. How can I use my vocabulary? Uh, so first I'll just tell you, vocabulary can only be singular. The word vocabulary, we don't use an S on the end. We don't say vocabularies. If you want to make it plural, you can say, how can I use my vocabulary words and put the S on the end of words, uh, but I totally understand you. So Rami, great job using your English and making a mistake so that you can learn from it. And, and Rami, thank you because 
several other people are going to learn from this mistake as well. So everyone say thank you to Rami in the chat here because uh, that kind of courage is what helps everyone learn. Um, so a way to use your vocabulary. Someone already said, speak to yourself. I would recommend recording yourself, practicing your new vocabulary. The most important way to practice your new vocabulary is to make it something you can relate to. I have a video coming out on Tuesday, uh, another story that you can learn from. Have you heard our new English story series here on in or part of me YouTube? Uh, have you heard or seen the first video came out a couple weeks ago? Uh, English stories you can listen to to improve your fluency. Um, there's another one coming out on Tuesday where I teach you vocabulary, but then I give you some ideas on how to use the vocabulary um, so that you will remember it. And one of the most important things is to think of something that you can relate to with the vocabulary. So let's take a really easy um Example, did we get a new vocabulary word here today? I'm, I can't remember because of the technical stuff, but let's say we all know the word cat. Um, but when you first read, learn the word cat, the reason you remembered it is probably because you saw a picture and cats are very common. Um, but also you thought about a cat you knew, your own cat, a friend's cat, somebody else's cat, or maybe you don't like cats. And that helps you to remember, I don't like cats. So it has to be something you can relate to, make it personal. We say own it, own it. So we, you want to own your vocabulary, which means you want to make it yours. You want to practice it in a way that you can remember what it is. And well, that was confusing the way I said that, sorry. Practice it in a way that you relate to so that you can remember it. Okay, thank you to the people who are uh, saying thanks to Rami. And let's see here. Can I read everything books? If I would not understand 20 to 30%, is it, will it be useful? Okay, hello, hello. Mm. If you're only understanding 20 to 30% of what you're reading, um, it's too difficult. But if you meant it the other way, like if you can understand 70 to 80 percent, yes, it is useful because you're you're seeing the things, you know, with other words and structures. It's most useful if you understand what's happening, even if you don't understand every word. Also, one of the things that I do learning my second language is to read something that I only understand maybe 70 to 80 percent. Not something huge and long, not something that's frustrating to me, because if you're getting frustrated, then no, it's not helping you. Um, what will help you is if you can find something you enjoy reading or listening to, actually, and you can understand basically what's happening. And then that leads me to the question of, should I look up every word or not? when I'm reading or listening. Okay, so of course, again, the answer is it depends on your goal. If your goal is to learn vocabulary, then yes, you should look up more words, maybe not every word, but more words. If your goal is to um, increase your understanding when you're listening or reading to um, increase your understanding of grammar, then no, don't look up as many words because you're practicing the grammar and the structure and getting the story and the understanding that's really important and then also you when you're reading or listening you want to especially when you're reading you want to try to get clues from the rest of the um, words that you do understand what could this word be what what do I think that word might be and does this word remind me of another word I posted a great little clip on my Instagram today, actually from Language Snaps. Um, so you could go check that out if you're listening today. 
uh, it's on my story um, on Instagram. If you don't follow us on Instagram, our Instagram has the same name, English Coach Three Ts. Um, and when I post this video, I'll put a link to the Instagram down in the description. Uh, so she describes how learning parts of words, like the first part of a word, if it starts with R-E like this, redirect as an example. If you know the word redirect, then to redirect is to direct again, because the little beginning of the word re means again. Rewind is to wind backwards, but it, it's like to listen again. You rewind the video so you can hear it again. Rewind, review. You might review your vocabulary. Huge, huge pointer, by the way, review. No, it is so important to review. And, um, not in a way that's boring, but in a way that you enjoy. Just a little aside there, a little extra there. But the word review, view is to look at something. So when we review something, we look at it again. Even if we are listening again, because we often use the word to see or to look at something to mean to experience it again, not just to look, but to hear and to experience it again. Okay, so these are a couple tips for learning vocabulary. Let's see if I missed any, any uh, questions. Velika says, what is your second language? My first language is English. My second language is Spanish. I'm learning Spanish as a second language. I just started learning German and Korean, uh, but I will say I'm not learning German and Korean like I learn Spanish, um, be, mostly because I don't have the time, but because it's very fun for me. And uh, someday I'd like to make more time to learn Korean and German and, and other languages as well. So I'm curious what your first languages are. If you're listening to me or uh, on the recording, what is your first language? I'm curious. Um, okay, let's see if I missed any questions here. I think I got most of the questions. If I missed your question, go ahead and write it in the comments again. Or if you haven't had the courage to ask a question yet, we still have a few minutes. So write your question in the, um, in the comments. Uh, hey, Josinaldo uh, speaks Portuguese as a first language. I've I, I actually knew that already because I know Josie Naldo um, from class. Uh, okay, you learn with self-study, yes. Okay, I think this question is, do I learn Spanish with self-study? I did learn Sp Spanish with self-study for the first couple of years until I got to like a B1, almost B2. And then I did have a teacher occasionally, not very often, I had a conversation exchange from the beginning. If you haven't watched our video about conversation exchange, I'll link it below, make a note here. Um, conversation exchange, I'll link it below um, because I tell a little bit about using how I used a conversation exchange. That was extremely helpful. It's a free way to um, learn a language. I still use a conversation exchange. After about two years, maybe a little more or less, I went to Mexico and to a program that was very affordable. Affordable means it doesn't cost a lot um, and was able to be immersed or surrounded by the language. So there's two vocabulary words if you don't know these words, or even if you do, practice affordable doesn't cost very much and immersed to be surrounded by something. I can immerse something in my water. I won't do this, but if I dropped this in here, my AirPod case into the water, it would be immersed in the water, surrounded by the water. And that was extremely helpful. And of course, that immersion program was led by a teacher. And then when I came back from there, and I think actually before I went there, I had a speaking teacher who was just a tutor. 
And then I hired a teacher to um, speak Spanish and teach me more about some of the things I was really having difficulty with. For me, in Spanish, there are some things that are very difficult about Spanish that aren't as difficult about English and the other way around or vice versa. Vice versa means the other way around. So here's some vocabulary for you to practice. Okay, lots of comments. I'm gonna get to these. How many minutes or hours do you spend to learn languages every day? Okay, so for, for the languages I said that I just started, German and um, Korean, I don't practice those every day. I'm doing that for fun and enjoyment. So when I have time off and some extra time, I will practice. Sometimes I do more and sometimes less, or sometimes just a couple minutes every day. For Spanish, because this is the language I'm focusing on learning, I practice at least 10 minutes every day, but I have integrated Spanish into my life, integrated. So what I mean is I don't count the minutes or the time, but I have things I do every day that help me with my Spanish or help me to practice Spanish that aren't like studying. So for instance, I have a book that I read out of every morning. This is my daily reader. And so they're right there. That's about four or five minutes every day. I record myself speaking at least a few times a week. And if I don't have my recorder with me, I speak to myself whenever I can, maybe three minutes a day, maybe 10 minutes a day. I speak with a uh, a teacher at least once a week and a language exchange. I try to do it every week. Sometimes it gets changed or canceled. So sometimes I have, usually I have one, sometimes I have none. And often I have two every week. So that is another half an hour. Um, I watch shows in Spanish. I listen to a Spanish podcast almost every day. That's 20 minutes to an hour, almost every day. Cause I do it while I'm, every time I'm doing dishes, I listen to Spanish or if I'm cleaning, sometimes if I'm walking, usually if I'm driving, which I don't drive very much, but when I do. So if this helps you to get an idea, I have made Spanish a part of my life. How often do I sit down with a book and, and study Spanish? Not very often, maybe never anymore. In the beginning, I did that daily, um, but I do read in Spanish. I'm currently reading The Alchemist which I stopped reading a while back to read something else. And now I've started reading it again. Okay, I'm almost out of time. So I'm gonna look quickly. How long do I need to listen to a language in order to start understanding all of it? You're always building. I There is, there are, I should say, things that I can listen to now that I don't understand. I've been speaking English my whole life, more than 56 years. And there are things I can listen to I don't understand. So the answer to that is you're always building your listening skills. So listen to something you understand most of it, maybe 90%, and keep building, keep building, keep building. In Spanish, for me, um, I have been listening and building up to where I could listen to things made for native speakers instead of for students. And there are some things I can understand for native speakers and there are other things I can't. And there's a lot of different things. There are a lot of reasons why that is. Okay. May I study one example? Let's see. May I study, for example, one language using English early? I've studied French and do that. Does that make me happy? I understand it the same. I'm not sure I understand. It looks like Oh, okay, let's see. Early I've studied French and I do that, I think, because it makes me happy. I understand it the same. Maybe, uh, I'm not sure, look at what you wrote because I, I think there might be a, uh, a way to make your question more clear. Uh, okay, the sentence access from the doors on the right, is it correct? I see it at the subway. Okay, access from the doors at the right. It means that you need to get on the train from the doors that are on the right. They, to access something is to get to it, to, in this case, get on the train, um, which is the best way to improve my fluency in English. 
I have a problem in remembering the suitable words while trying to speak. Thanks in advance for your great work you're doing here. You're welcome. Thank you for your question. Um, we have a video course specifically for how to remember the words you're using, how to become more fluent. The name of the video course is how to become more fluent using Instagram. You can also use all of the tips that I share with you in that course on YouTube and of course on podcast. Um, I make it specific to Instagram uh, because a lot of people think they're using Instagram to get fluent and it's not typically happening that way. Um, longer videos like this can help. Knowing what to do with those videos, knowing how to use them can really help. So if you would like uh, to find out more about that, you can go to my website with the same name, EnglishCoach3Ts.com. Um, or you can, um, when I put this recorded video on YouTube, I'll put the link to that, that course, how to uh, become more fluent, I'm making a note, using Instagram. It is a video course that you can use anytime, anywhere. It has seven videos so that you know exactly what to do. And it has things to show you so you can plan what you're going to do. So um, that is, if that's something that is interesting to you, go check that out. Click the link below when this is a recording. Okay, I hope I got to everyone's question. Miriam asked, when will I be live again? Thank you, Miriam. I almost forgot to say I'm currently going live every Saturday at 1.30 p.m. Los Angeles, California time here on YouTube. Um, th there are occasionally times when I need to change that. And um, I usually uh, make a little you, an announcement on YouTube. So if you're not following us, be sure to subscribe. If you haven't already liked this video, please like the video. It does really help us to help more people and to help our YouTube channel. Um, and thank you. Thank you, Miriam, for asking that question. I hope that was helpful. I think I got, ah, thank you for the flower. I think I got most of the questions. If I did miss your question, please don't um, hesitate to go put a comment on the recording of this live. Thank you again. I'm looking forward to seeing all of you next Saturday at the same time for the live. And next Tuesday morning at 9 p.m. Los Angeles time, we post a, a YouTube video each Tuesday. So I hope to see you there as well. And thank you again. Bye-bye.